The last step with FM Data Guard is to set up security with record level access. Record level access is a security feature that allows a Boolean result from a calculation to determine whether a user can view, edit, or delete on a record by record basis. The most common scenario is you have an auto enter account. We already have one in here, I believe. We'll take a look in Manage Database. You see we have this account create and account modify. Well, we take this account create, put it in the calculation inside security, which we'll show you in a minute, and say, does the person who created this record equal the current account, get current account, or get account name? I forget which it is. I sometimes forget all this stuff off the top of my head, but when I start typing it, it seems to come out. So we just compare those two, and either it's true or false. And so the person who created that record is the only person who can, let's say, view or edit or delete that record. But before we do that, let's get our layout set up first. We're going to go into layout mode, create a new layout. We're going to show records from the audit log. Now, this is the external reference. We have all these other audits and audit push and stuff. This is the one that was connected to the FM data guard file that you need to have. And so we'll call this one audit log just the same name, do a list view. And what we'll put on here is just a few fields. We'll start with probably the field name is the most important thing to do. We'll put that on there. Whoops, moved the wrong thing. Put it up there so it's not going to spend a lot of time making this look nice and neat. Make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to option drag it. We'll choose before what the data was before the data is after and then finally what the event was because it won't matter at the beginning because we're going to be very simple but eventually you're going to get all these different types of events so let's go ahead and align these on their bottoms just to neaten it up a little bit underline them left justify them there we go to the left and then move each one individually till the guide shows up there we go just using the arrow keys on the keyboard to do that there we go now it's not the best layout I ever designed but it does work and let's tighten up this body part a lot so that we get a nice we can show a lot of records per page and let's see make it one more pixel up with the arrow keys looks pretty good go into browse mode now you may have some records in here already because you may have fiddled around with the audit log and the demo already. And if there are some in here, you can decide to keep them or you can delete them. It's really up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, mine's empty, but if they're in there, I would, I would just recommend probably deleting them. It's probably the best idea. That way you don't get confused at all. So we'll go into layout mode. Go back over to our manage layouts. Don't let people access that through the menu switch back to our contacts form which will actually will be the part that's logging things and now we're gonna go into our example okay remember if you can't get access to managed security that's because you haven't logged in as admin just choose a script right here and it'll be easy to do so we'll go into manage security go into our privilege sets you can see there's one privilege set user which is logged on. They have kept it very simple in here. And so we're logged in as admin right now, but when you initially open the file, it logs in as this because you can't change the privilege set the way we want to for full access. You can come in here and edit it, but you can't change this stuff right here. That's why they want you to be in at the lower level password so you can see this happening. So we're going to go into that privilege set that's attached to this account, the user account, edit it, and you can see we can get into the custom privileges and you can see all these limited this is the record level access here we're gonna go into any one of these it's exactly the same formula no different on these tables although you do have to have this formula on every table you want to track and we're gonna go with the most basic formula on the edit so we're gonna to go to limited and here's the formula all we do is we copy this to the clipboard when you first start off with FM data guard don't make it complex 
There are things you can do and options you can do, but just copy their example here and make your life easy. If you do need to do something more than that, you can read the documentation and go further. And we're not going to go real far with this. I wanted to show you what the what you can get out of this with very little work. And let's take a quick look at the formula. You can see it's all adaptive code. There's no references to anything other than things that should be there. So you've got get file name, that's dynamic. You got get field, which is dynamic. It refers to those two fields, right? The FMDG UUID. It's right in there. It's all that stuff. That's what triggers things that go on. So this will trigger this formula to actually enact because it's all in there and triggers that. That's the reference that makes that happen. Don't ask about the code right now. It's not really important your first time out. You know, for, other than it being adaptive, it's just using this function call from FM Data Guard. That's why it starts off. You'll see plugins all start with the name of the plugin and then what it does. So here's a start edit. So we've copied that. We'll cancel out of this. Don't need to keep anything we've done. Go back to our my log. Go into our security. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a password on the admin because you really should have one. Otherwise, it's going to give us a warning when we come out of here. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Simple as that. Click OK. Click OK. Ask me to verify it so I don't get locked out. And then I'm going to go into File Options, which is under the File menu if I can find it and uncheck this login using. That's all we have to do because we don't want it to automatically log on anymore. That's not really secure. So now it'll ask us for a password every time we log on. Now we're going to come back into security, type in our full access, which is admin 1234, very simple password, don't forget it. We're going to create ourselves a new privilege set, call it data entry. We're going to choose on that, create, edit, and delete. All view only, all view only, all executable only. I don't really care about this stuff because it's just for testing. We'll click OK. But before we do that, I'm going to go into custom privileges. Just on the contacts, I'm going to choose limited. And now I'm going to paste that formula unchanged. As long as you didn't change that field name when you copied it from the sample into here, this code will work perfectly. Okay, admin, one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and do a new window. Go into layout mode. Switch over to our audit log. Go back into browse mode. And you see there's nothing in there, right? Nothing at all. So I'm going to log out. And actually, I forgot one part before I log out. Let's go back into Manage Security. I had created the privilege set, but I didn't attach anybody to it. So admin, one, two, three, four. Good thing I caught that. Let's make a new one. We'll call it JMO. Give them a simple same password, one, two, three, four. You normally wouldn't do this, of course. You give something more complex that was hard to guess. And I'll make sure he's attached that data entry privilege set. Click OK, admin, one, two, three, four. Now we're ready to go. Close out. Open it again. We'll go to JMO, one, two, three, four. Sign in. Let's go to our new window here. And actually, we don't have the ability to create a new window, but let's just make some changes here. Let's change John, and we'll change me to have not have an E there, and then we'll close and open up again with our admin. One, two, three, four. Don't forget the password. People always contact me and ask me what that password is. Now, what we're really interested in here now is coming into a new window and going into layout mode, switching over to audit log, and then back into browse mode. And let's see what we've got. Okay, you've got some stuff in here. You can see that it's telling you that it's created this information right here. These are all the fields it's going to go ahead and log. It's got all this stuff, but really what you care about is not that stuff, but mostly John Mark was changed to John. You can see all this other stuff here, Osborne to Osborne, admin. You see all these things happen, very cool stuff. 
very easy to track. And so now we can actually go ahead, if we want, and put in all this information inside of this layout. Just use a portal. So we need to go to Manage Database. We'll take this audit log and connect it up to contacts. And now the thing is, is I forget actually which we want to use here. I think it's primary key. But let's go take a look. I'll set it up that way. And let's take a look at that layout and make sure we've got it right. So I'm going to add on the primary key. And let's see what we've got here. Primary key. Go into browse mode. And you can see that those are primary key. That's the value I'm using. So I chose the right field. So now it can connect on that. So you can see how important it's going to be to differentiate your serial numbers from table to table, right? You're going to want to have something so that we don't have, you know, 88 on two different tables because all your stuff's going to get stored in this one, you know, logging table. And you need to differentiate by having something before the serial number to go ahead and tell it that it's different. You could also use a, a UUID, and you kind of see that they're talking about UUIDs throughout this, and that will do the same thing, but I'm old school, and, and I find serial numbers more flexible, so I use those instead, and it's very simple to make them different for each table by just putting a couple of letters in front of them. And so now if we go back into layout mode, come over here to our contacts form, we'll put plug in, create that, click OK get our fields here. I'll just grab the ones from the previous one. Copy them. Paste them. Draw ourselves a nice portal here. Connect it to our audit log. Vertical scroll bar, that's all we really need. Choose the fields we want. Field, before, and after. There we go. Click OK go to browse mode and you'll see that those changes will be right in there you'll be able to track them and so if you want you can also filter things out if you want and we can take a look at that in a future video to see how we can because you probably aren't interested in all this stuff that's in here other than name first is changed from John Mark to John and name last Osborne Osborne let's find out how to filter this stuff out so you only look at what you want to see and you don't even have to show this this on the layout you don't have to show the users uh, you know a portal but it's kinda nice to be able to see this information you know if, if a user is trying to look through it and of course you should limit what they can do to this not edit it and things like that uh, to through security to prevent them from making changes accidentally